and welcome to another video. NixOS continues to gain interest in the Linux community. The most recent version, codenamed Stoat, was released back in May, but it remains as relevant today as it was several months ago. Nix has a reputation in some circles for having a steep learning curve, along with hit and miss documentation that might drive many people away from this fascinating declarative distro. For me, I'm pretty old school, and I'm used to configuring a system by its individual components, such as printing, networking, desktops, and so forth, separately. NixOS does things radically different, with most configuration items contained in one single file, where the system creates generations as you modify and rebuild it. So for this video, I'd like to give Stoat a test run by installing it in a virtual machine and configuring a simple desktop suitable for creating YouTube videos just like this one. Let's see how easily this can be accomplished. This is the stable live ISO. We'll select the first boot menu item and allow the installation environment to come up. This is again a KVM QEMU virtual machine. We're going to test this basic NixOS install, and there it is. It launches the NixOS installer right away. American English is correctly detected. Click Next. My time zone, America Los Angeles, is also correct and auto detected. Next. English default keyboard layout is correct. Click Next. My name is Steven. We'll set up Steven's account. I give myself a decent password here and we'll also use the same password for the administrator account. I'll click Next. GNOME, you can also select other desktop environments, so no desktop at all if you prefer. We'll select GNOME uh, for this exercise. Click Next and uh, it's fully open source but for allowing all your hardware to function you may need to check Allow Unfree Software. For the partitioning of our 128 gig VDA storage device, we can select No Swap, Swap, with No Hibernate, or Swap with Hibernate. We're going to set up ZRAM later in this video, so I'll select No Swap here and click Next. And here's our installation summary page. We've got a very simple two partition setup, the boot EFI FAT32 partition, and the rest is NixOS on EXT4 file system. We'll go ahead and click install. Note the uh, time here. It's 2.31 in the afternoon. And let's just time this on how long it takes to install. And it's done. So just a couple of minutes, really. One of the fastest installations uh, right now. Okay, so next, let's go ahead and uh, restart the system. In order to do that, we just hit restart and we'll boot into our freshly installed NixOS GNOME desktop base system my password in here and since this is a virtual machine I don't want anything to go wrong here so I'm going to stick with xorg instead of uh, Wayland but Wayland works just fine in fact Wayland works very well uh, with NixOS in my experience so we'll skip the tour this is not about GNOME today we'll switch to the dark style and do some quick configuration so first off like to click on power and turn off all the power saving options for the demo so it doesn't suspend on us right in the middle of uh, me talking about something. Next we'll change the display resolution to the current 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution. So there we go. That makes of course the fonts a little small so we'll go to accessibility, go to seeing, and then turn on the large text option for accessibility and make the cursor size, the mouse cursor, a little bit bigger. There you go. Hopefully you guys can read this a little better. 
So our base GNOME 44 setup is complete. Next, this is these are the apps that are come uh, de as default with the GNOME install. Fairly complete, but let's continue to set up this workstation as I like to set it up. So first of all, with NixOS, um, we've got the basic release here. As you can see, um, the version code name is Stoat because we're running as of this video's uh, release date, uh, the latest uh, stable, which is uh, 23.05. So we got the LTS kernel. GNOME Shell, as I mentioned before, is version 44.2. Uh, the basic install uh, shows that we've got 7.6 gigabytes on the root which is the, uh, where NixOS is installed, right, on the ext4 file system. Free shows we have actually relatively uh, low memory uh, usage for GNOME, but no swap, right? We haven't configured swap because we want to use compressed RAM for swap. Works very well and doesn't wear out your SSDs. And that's what I like to use. So let's do our initial configuration here. So we sudo nano as our editor at c nixos configuration.nix and since steven's sudo user we just enter the sudo password and we're off to the races in configuration very simple basic configuration all the things i do here in this file i looked up on the nixos wiki and uh, uh you know just read 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 study it so First off, I like to um, uh, enable the Plymouth uh, splash screen during my uh, Linux boots to make it a little uh, prettier and less texty. But some of you might skip that, but I'll just enable Plymouth here. So I've got a nice splash screen. And then we'll change the host name. I'll call this workstation host name stoat-1. Yeah, as I was going to say, um, uh, NixOS boots so quickly, uh, the Plymouth bootloader, it, you only sh see it for a short moment. Uh, it's like NixOS is a speed demon in my experience. So once you've uh, uh, re you edited the configuration file, you need to rebuild it with sudo nixos-rebuild switch. So that creates a new generation. And so for every little, even minor changes in the configuration file, I always recommend uh, creating a new generation that you can boot from and you can roll back uh, should something go sideways. You don't want to have too many big changes. Because it's, as you can see, it happens very quickly. Let's reboot to let the changes take effect for Plymouth uh, splash screen and the hostname change. For that, we have to reboot, I think. So you, as you can see, we have the original and the new generation, generation one and generation two, which we just created with the rebuild. So let's select generation two. And there it goes. See, it's, it boots so quickly, uh, the splash screen really isn't useful here. It's amazing how fast NixOS is in terms of system response. Okay, um, it's moving right along. As you can see, the new host name took effect. Steven at stoat-1. So uh, free shows we still don't have our ZRAM configured. So let's take care of that now by editing the uh, central configuration file for NixOS. As we did before, we'll do a password for uh, root or administrative access. And let's get ZRAM configured. It's very simple. Let's see where I put this in the configuration file. Um, I'll put it right here under Pipewire. Okay, so always comment to the configuration file, of course. So enable ZRAM. 
and it's a very simple configuration item. Namely, you can look this up in the uh, wiki or the documentation. ZRAM swap, case sensitive, capital S, dot enable equals true. Don't forget the uh, trailing semicolon. The Nix programming language requires that for every configuration item. And there we go. So now we just do a sudo nixos rebuild switch. So that should build generation three, right? Let's, let's let it do its thing. And there we go, very simple. As you can see, new units were started, the ZRAM swap, namely. And if I do free again, our ZRAM swap has been enabled with a simple one-liner in a configuration file. Much simpler than many other uh, Linux distributions that don't have ZRAM in enabled by default. Very well, so that's generation three. Let's go ahead and go to generation four. Let's go back into the configuration file. And uh, next what I'd like to do, let's just go down here to the um, uh, user configuration for, for my account. I'd like to enable uh, virtualization and QEMU. I like to make this workstation enable to be used for creating YouTube videos such as this one. So I'd like to add myself to the extra group libvirtd for QEMU uh, KVM. Uh, daemon, so they're able to access all its functions. And for the environment system packages, uh, we'll keep with packages so we don't have to keep uh, typing packages all the time with our request. I'm going to add DistroBox for our containerization. This comes in handy if you want to run um, this other distros in a container or other apps. Also, I'd like to install gnome.gnome-tweaks. You can look for these uh, apps, uh, these packages rather, these Nix packages in the uh, main NixOS website. Also Vert Manager, so I like uh, a graphical uh, front end for virtualization configuration. Okay, um, we're not quite done yet. Um, what I need to do, again, according to the wiki, is I'd like to I put this at the very bottom, but a little bit where we enable some demons and services here. List services that you want to enable. Okay. So, to enable uh, libvirt, let me just put in a comment, virtualization, so I can uh, search for it at a later date if I need to change the configuration. I'll just put in here virtualization dot libvirt daemon dot uh, enable equals true and don't forget the semicolon and uh, in addition the wiki tells us that we also need to configure uh, programs dot deconf dot enable equals true as well. And I believe, I believe that should do it. So what we do is we exit. So this should just turn on QEMU KVM virtualization for our workstation, GNOME workstation here. So let's rebuild switch. So that will pull down a whole bunch of support packages in addition to the libvirt daemon and the QEMU KVM packages. And it's done, and as you can see, new units were already started. Libvirt guests, libvirt daemon, etc., etc. So to make this take, let's log out and log back in again. So the uh, Vert Manager app shows up properly with its proper icons in the uh, app selection here in GNOME. Let's just go to showing all apps, and there it is, Virtual Machine Manager. But before we launch it, let's uh, do some GNOME tweaks first. First, I like the legacy applications to be Adwaita-Dark, 
for my accessibility, my eyesight depends on not too much bright stuff. I get headaches otherwise. I'll turn on the minimize and maximize title bars uh, options and hover focus. And that's it. Now let's launch Virtual Machine Manager. And it says could not detect the default hypervisor. Make sure do this. So let's do it here. Go to File and Add Connection. And we'll just make sure that Auto Connect is checked. And we just select Connect. And now it should automatically connect to the host QEMU KVM uh, instance for host hosting uh, virtual machines. And there you go. So if I select this instance and go to Edit, Connection Details, you can see, well, even though it's not active yet, you can configure activating the default NAT, Network Address Translation configuration. And also, uh, you have the active uh, storage, backing storage for your virtual machines. So everything is ready to go for your virtual machines. It's that simple. I won't go into details for Virt Manager. Other videos uh, go over this in more detail. So I'll skip this to keep this video short. Let's go back to the console. And um, we're getting there. Uh, one thing I like to do is uh, go back into the configuration file here. And uh, add some, for me, very important functionality. Namely, let me just go down here. Yeah, let's find a good spot in the configuration file. I'm trying to make sense of how they organize this. I'm still a beginner with Nix OS. I'll get better as I use it uh, more frequently. Um, just want to make sure a good spot. I guess here is, is good enough. So what I want to do is, and this works really well for me because I can take these flat packs from machine to machine and do backups uh, and, and, and save my configurations for all my apps that I need for uh, making YouTube videos. So I like to enable flat packs. Some of you may not like flat packs. I'll show you how to get rid of it if you prefer not to use flat packs. So services.flatpack.enable equals true. Turns on flat packs. So after every configuration change, we have to uh, rebuild a new generation, right? So we've done that. So um, let's clear the terminal or the console rather, and let's uh, type flat pack remotes. So we don't have any uh, remote repositories configured yet for Flatpak. So let's do that by doing a Flatpak remote dash add dash dash if not exists Flathub. So we'll call that repo Flathub. HTTPS colon slash slash DL dot Flathub dot org slash repo slash Flathub dot flatpack repo and hit return and it should ask us for the uh, elevated root password and so now we have our remotes we got flat hub hub and the apps are installed system wide all right so flatpack list by the way you can now uh, install flat pack packages in a software center. But what I'm going to do here is show you how to do it uh, via the shell. So just type flat pack install flat hub. So I can install LibreOffice and use that quite a bit for a lot of things, including these uh, YouTube videos. And we'll go ahead and install it. It's that simple. Again, you can use the software center instead of this but I like to be a little adventure, adventurous in my new NixOS install. In addition to LibreOffice, I, I also use 
uh, OBS Studio. It's com.obsproject.studio with a capital S. Again, I believe all this, including the configuration file, is case sensitive, just like just about all of Unix is in Linux. All right. Next, I'd like to install um, KDN Live, a great video editor. All open source, fantastic products, considering but you get it for free. So there we go. And what else do I need? Let's see here. We want to install. No, I think we're all set here. Flat pack list. This is ba the bare minimum I need to use, plus the uh, KVM QEMU virtualization to create these uh, YouTube videos for you guys. And that's it. Very simple. And uh, so let's uh, quickly um, Ah, you see the software center is not there. Uh, the software application is not showing yet. So we have to log out as we did before and log back in again. And then all our flat packs should show up. Show apps. And there they are. Library Office, KDN Live, OBS Studio is probably in the next screen here. Let me launch LibreOffice. So you can see it's a flat pack, so you've got an officially supported, if you will, um, app about LibreOffice. Shows we're running the latest version, 7621. It's available for LibreOffice Calc. All right, so let's go back to the console. Make it full screen here. And uh, what I like to do is do a sudo nix-env-p nix var nix profile system dash dash list dash generation set. So as you can guess, lists all the generations. Enter my password. So supposing, so we're on generation five, which is the current generation. Generation five is when we enabled flat packs. So if you guys, or if you don't like uh, flat pack for whatever reason, you don't want it on your system, it's very easy with NixOS to do a rollback to a previous generation. So here's how we do it. We go ahead and we uh, type sudo nixos dash rebuild switch then dash dash rollback so this should get rid of all our flat pack configurations as you can see it just takes care of the uh, rollback for us it goes from generation 5 to generation 4 as the default it keeps generation 5 in case we want to go forward and get our flat packs back. You can go back and forth with NixOS as you see fit. It's one of the power of NixOS and its linking system. So it has multiple generations that way it can organize. So we'll select, select uh, NixOS generation four, which is the default. And we log in. And we're back again. So uh, let's launch the console. And as you can see, flat pack list shows flat pack command not found. So the flat pack system is, com is removed. And as you can see, all the flat packs that we've installed LibreOffice, KDN Live, they're all gone. So there you go. 
This was a uh, quick setup of a very basic foundational NixOS um, install on a virtual machine. As you can see, by planning ahead and collecting the documentation before you start, setting up NixOS can be very straightforward without even having to really learn the Nix language. Pretty impressive and speedy system. So I'm thinking of continuing my Nix adventures by building on this simple base install for future videos. If you like this video, please smash that like button and subscribe. Until next time, take care and have lots of fun. Mm -hmm.